Immersion in Action Aid is a program and it's also an approach that enables the different people that participate in it to put a face to poverty. In the way they understand poverty and injustice, but also in the way then they later will approach on how to eradicate them. In this case, therefore, we build up a system, create a space that brings people that engage on their day-to-day -day in the policy-making processes. And those people whose decisions affect people who are living in poverty, together with those who on a daily basis live in poverty or in injustice. Now, this therefore creates space for the policy and decision makers to have an experience of living in poverty. This experience is what we call a space that is experiential learning. Uh, my name is uh, Osinde Owo. I work in the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development as a commissioner in the field of community development. I am also a member of the non-governmental organization and popularly known as NGO board. And that's why I'm specifically here because I'm representing the board. Uh, this place where I am belongs to Mr. Oriem Mukeka Makuo with his dear wife, Akeshi Betty. And this very place here is uh, called Amora Village in Guruguru Parish, Lamogisabu County of Amuru District. Uh, this very home uh, is a home which is in a forest. And uh, what it shows you is that uh, it is a home that has emerged out of the civil strife, the war we have had in this country since 1987. And uh, because of that total displacement of people, people were actually put in the camps. And the, in the camps they were staying like what we call a kral, where we put cows. So you can see that uh, Oriye Mukeka Makuo and his family is in a forest, they have just started this. I have about three objectives. Objective number one is, first of all, to understand the displacement and then the resettlement of people. Uh, these are people who had better homes. People are people who had a lot of food. These are people who had a good education orientation. Then the two are also trying to understand the knowledge they are applying. Mm? The knowledge and the skills they are applying in order to cope up with the, the situation. And the theory, I want to evaluate. Eh? how far this has actually been carried out in relation to government's work. Another aspect that uh, we have seen is his settlement here after the war is a settlement that it has made him work very hard. When you look at this home, this is a model home. Eh? A model home with over nine good houses. Eh? plate stand, a pit latrine well maintained, a good bathroom, hmm, a good compound, and you can even see their health. Eh? They are really, they really try to uh, get what is required out of them. So this is what we call in social work development, home and village improvement. He has improved on his home, and now this home can be used as a, as a satellite to improve on the village. And then when they gang up for American money, Anna T. Gigwak Mogoma, Guadalupeano, Dog by Twilight, Yomi School, and a paramish will lend to Yellow Yan. He, Dark and Madog, what or me, you the coroner Miro, would walk Duanwa, the Parma wanna tea, and Pian wanna take a lutini, Yomi Chul, Tare, Kan Paravati or Yare, or Yanomate, Pee, Pucker, Mirror, Kagi Dog, and Walker Potter, Long me pee. 
we are me and get one of better gone. Gin ma, a rote, he will and I'm a young chunya. Bear for my mina. My phone, my party party. You are my baby group. You are my teacher, you are my pat pat. The kid me, Kelo, Jim, a Kelo down low development. And I again, ma, a rote, a kid. The man no me at one, you're chewing more, my dead, my cat away. Ma kak kit kwa e fun man me de. Si a gani wan luak ma e kinte dero. Orang bergi yom chui. An gani mu yom chui na kin luak ma wele berka luak e. Mi a tiel fun mi kwan. Pian kan ni wan nok kilo kwan tu tuan. Ma kan ni nokar mi a ngai dano berawai jala niira kwan gi per miir per gi kwan. Si an no ni e no beri yom chui. My name is Gimbo Harriet and I am the director of programs for Action Aid in Uganda. I am in this particular village, Azani Masi, who has come to experience the life of uh, the people living in these communities. And I am living with a, a widow who is a mother of uh, seven children and also has grandchildren in her home. And of my interest is to see what kind of life she lives high experience but also my own experiential learning to see what happens to such a person in such a community, a settling community with the limited social services around the area. I just got to know that the school is close to four kilometers away, the health center is over six kilometers away and what it means for such a person to walk to such a location. What we expect from this is to see change in the lives of the participants and um, as long as they begin to unlearn by looking at the things that they believed in was the rightful thing and find out that they are wrong. Today is my second day. Of course uh, yesterday I had those a good experience in terms of what happens in the household, uh, the normal work that a woman does at home that involves, you know, fetching water, looking for firewood, cooking, but we kept on doing one activity after the other until we got to dinner and went to a fireplace to share experience. I learned a lot about Acholi culture and what happens in marriages, what happens in homes, the sanctions around uh, men that steal people's girls. And I just wish those sanctions were working in Acholi. I think it would be a strong place for the protection of the girls and the women in this community. <laughs> And here today morning, we came to this garden to, to help the host family prepare the garden for the second time for planting uh, of crops in this area. He was also explaining the problem with her land, like a land around people that want to grab her land. And she was talking about having reported to the LOC one, having reported this to the land board or something, but she has not been given enough support. Though she's confident, that the security she has is from the neighborhood. The neighbors know that her boundaries pass here and there, but she doesn't have a lot of support from the leadership. And that's what she thinks she needs more. Uh, so my name is Mishka Martin. Um, and I am from ActionAid Uganda and uh, at ActionAid Uganda I work as the youth advisor 
and as youth advisor I'm particularly interested in um, roles and responsibilities of young people within the family at different stages of their lives um, and how that hi possibly hinders um, meaningful sort of participation in the community or looking at how you can really get young people involved in, in community activity. Um, and also, I feel that the word empowerment is used and overused so much and I'd like to know what that actually means to maybe people in this family. What does empowerment mean to them and what does it look like and what does it feel like? So the family I'm staying with here, uh, there's five children, but there's many more people here today because the neighbours have come over. And then I also believe there's aunts and uncles that live close by and come in and out as well. So there's a lot of people to talk to. ชุนยอบิดยอมมาเดอไม่กลัวเวเลกิโอยากิกิเมลวะคนเนกิโมมาเตอมาราจิบิดเป้วอบิดกิยอมชุนยูเวเลตามมาราจิบิดเป้มา
For example, my host family here, Michael, has to travel about four to five kilometers to come and, uh, and grow his food. Now, that is unimaginable. How can you walk five kilometers, get to the garden, do work, and then go back another five kilometers? That is unimaginable. You cannot imagine how difficult that is. And if you are going to succeed in becoming a farmer, you have to be nearby. And so, issues of uh, loans, issues of uh, uh, support from the government are very crucial if they have to become good farmers. I think the aspect of empowerment is, is, what, is what is the most uh, uh, burning now. That the community have to be empowered to meet their basic and social needs without necessarily leaning onto somebody to, to, to provide that in terms of uh, either a stipend or a handout. I also learned that in gender relations, it's, it is not easy. Issues of family planning, there seems to be a resistance in the community as far as family planning is concerned. And there, of course, we want to call upon government to come up with uh, interventions that actually they sensitize the communities using the LC system so that people can learn, particularly both men and women, why family planning is important and why they need to reduce the children. Some of those problems about polygamous family in fact, this one is a bit tricky because if you talk of polygamous family, maybe this time mass sensitization should go to the young one. Because even in uh, our cultural setting in the past, you find this, uh, especially these cultural leaders, the more wife you hate, that one is your, your power also. So you see that at times I have to address this one. Maybe there now we direct the campaign to the young ones. You find some of the families have 15 children, 13 children, and yet, you know, the food is scarce. Money to pay for school fees is not there. And so then uh, uh, succeeding in, in, in education is not there. Is that we have only one borehole and when the schools are in session it is very difficult for the communities also to access the water and the children also to access the water at the same time so what the community members were actually asking if it is possible to have another borehole at the school so that the children can access actually the water right from there so that this one remains as a community borehole and you've seen it for yourself, all the children are here now. And then we have also come to collect water. And so for, for us as Action Aid, I think we need to come in and intervene according to the priorities of uh, the communities. And the communities have various communities. Uh, priorities to do with education, to do of course with farming, so that they can increase their output. The poverty is not the absence of what? Not the absence of money. It comes along with uh, what we call jealousy. People tend not to invest, especially these farmers, or to cut all their activities. Because of this jealous, whereby People often on this see issues of burning. Someone has prepared the whole land, but the community now goes ahead to do what? Burn the whole garden. At the end of the day, you find that people will tend to live in poverty due to fear of what? The challenges they get from their fellow neighbors.
The resources there for that government, that also non-government entities, including the societies themselves, will put into development, will translate to results. That's what we We'll be meeting with the district leaders today. We shall pass all that you have told us to them and we shall hear what they are saying and we will still deliver it to you. This will not be our last visit. Our LRP is here. Whatever time they will be with you, they will be working with you and all that you want to say, you can only say it through them. Thank you so much for all that you have done for us. I would like to appreciate our, our fam host family we took them by surprise, we, all the, the facilitators, plus the interpreters, plus the crew, all of us who are staying with them, we are so grateful for, for that. Then I get the concept of poverty. Me, I, I went deep into that. You know, if you're not careful, people will tell you absence of money is the cause of poverty. And yet, like in the home where I was, there were seven main, main houses one for boys, one for girls, one for the man and his wife, another one for visitors, what have you then, the one for livestock, the one for pigs, 200 meters away from home, eh? and then a number of goats, a number of pigs. So when we went deep into discussion, we realized that there are a number of things that you need to put into perspective in order to answer, understand poverty. Not this economic way of defining it, or oh, less than one dollar a day, no. The issue of skills, the issue of knowledge, the issue of attitudes, eh? the issue of what you have and the way you use it comes out very, very clearly. And somehow you find out that somebody begins to believe that he may not be poor, but he only needs maybe a social direction of which the DCDO should be the head prefect for that. We as organizations and governments, whether at the local level, or central government, at any level. We've made a lot of mistakes in the past. For quite a long time, we were actually looking at programs that we can send to the lower level. We were not looking at the people to say what do they need, what are they saying, <coughs> that was not the case. And slowly, slowly, we started correcting ourselves. As you rightly said, that now the communities, and I think that was the secretary who said, that now you work with the people, you work with the communities. And Action Aid is doing exactly that. Action Aid is saying, it is not enough to do research and come and make presentations and say we can develop a plan from there. I want to say that I'm not taking long, but the catch word here is we need to talk community, we need to work community, we need to think community, and we need to implement community. By that way, I think we would be in position to achieve at whatever forum, whatever intervention, if we want to achieve, if we want also to own such project, even after the lifespan, then the level of engagement with the community. We need to begin engaging them right from the very beginning of the particular project. 